Greetings year two faith formation families. This month we are going to be looking at the sacrament of confession. And for this video, I have a double treat for you. I have enlisted the help of our children's coordinator, Leslie Klinger, and the parish pastor, Father Sam, as well as my kiddos, to help you learn how to teach your kids about the sacrament of reconciliation, otherwise known as confession. If your kids are preparing for their first confession, they may be a bit nervous. Unlike the other sacraments, the sacrament of confession is kind of one that you have to do on your own, and that can be pretty intimidating to kids for their first time. So, not only are we going to talk about the theology of confession with Miss Leslie, we're also going to be letting Father Sam give us a tour of the confessional and an idea of what actually doing your first confession is going to look like. So I hope you enjoy this. I hope you have a great month talking to your kids about the blessing of confession and reconciliation with God, and I'll see you next time. Hello, my Catholic family. Today we are going to discuss the Sacrament of Reconciliation. We are going to discuss how you and I, through the Sacrament of Reconciliation, can be healed of all of our sins and go out into the world to be Catholic out loud. The Sacrament of Reconciliation is also known as the Sacrament of Confession. The Sacrament is designed to heal us of the wounds caused by our sins. The sacrament allows us to renew our friendship with God and restores our relationship with the church. The sacrament gives us sanctifying grace and this grace allows us to be strong in the face of temptation. This sacrament, by virtue of giving us sanctifying grace, helps us to stay true to the commandments of God. When you and I go to confession, we are not just going to tell the priest all the things we did wrong. Oh no. The priest is actually acting in persona Christi. This is Latin for in the person of Christ. What this means is that when you and I go into the confessional and begin to tell the priest our sins, we are actually talking to Jesus himself. Because of that, you and I are in the safest place in the whole world that a Catholic can be, because we know that we can tell Jesus anything. The priest, because he is acting in persona Christi, has been given a special charism by virtue of his holy orders. He can never violate the seal of the confessional. He can never tell anyone what you or I tell him when we are in the confessional confessing our sins. When you and I have had our sins forgiven, we are back in friendship with God. It's important for us to talk about how you and I can prepare to have a good confession. I have discovered that one of the best ways to prepare for a good confession is to do an examination of my conscience, but not just once in a while. I do an examination of my conscience every night before I go to bed. What I do is I review my conduct over the day and I do it in light of what I know about the Ten Commandments. In the evening, when you do an examination of conscience, you can ask yourself some questions. Get yourself quiet. Ask for the Holy Spirit to guide you. Ask for your guardian angel to be with you as you do this examination of conscience. Write down your answers. Look at the answers you have written and see what areas of your life you need to improve, to help. These are the lists that you can take into the confessional to the priest. You can share those with the priest acting in persona Christi and receive the sanctifying grace that you need in order to be strong in the face of the temptation to commit these sins again. Now, how often should we go to confession? Holy Mother Church teaches that we are to go to confession whenever we are in a state of mortal sin or 
we are to go to confession at least once a year. However, remember, I told you that confession, that sacrament, is a healing sacrament. And it gives you something very special, sanctifying grace. This means we should go to confession often, at least once a month, although we can go more often than that, because when we receive that sanctifying grace, we receive the power we need to resist temptation. The more we go to confession, the more we receive that grace. So it is recommended that we go to confession at least once a month. We've talked about what the sacrament of confession is and what it does. The sacrament heals our wounds caused by sin and it gives us sanctifying grace. But what is sin? Most importantly, what is mortal sin? St. Augustine says that sin is a word, deed, or desire in opposition to the eternal law. Sin is a deliberate transgression against God. But what is mortal sin? Mortal sin destroys sanctifying grace in our souls and completely severs our relationship with God. In order for you to be guilty of a mortal sin, you must have full knowledge of this and yet do it anyway. So what is an example of mortal sin? Well, Believe it or not, missing Mass on Sunday is a mortal sin. Knowing that this is your obligation to go to Mass to worship God. If you deliberately and intentionally choose to not do that, you are going against God's commandment. It is a grave act to do that, and it means that you are willing to sever your relationship with God and to lose sanctifying grace in your soul. Now, what happens if someone has to work on Sunday? Well, God does not place an undue burden on his children. He understands that some people have to work. And if they do, they take the time to see, is there a mass that they can attend? Can they go to the vigil mass on Saturday night? attend the very first Mass Sunday morning before going to work, or the very last Mass Sunday night. But let's say none of that is available. They have to work. God would understand because those people would go to Mass if they could do so. They want to go to Mass. And so that is not a mortal sin. You and I are very blessed as Catholics. We must thank God for the sacrament of confession so together, let's pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. God, our Father, we thank you for the sacraments that you have given us through Holy Mother Church. We thank you for the sacrament of reconciliation, for the opportunity to go to the priest, acting in persona Christi, to have the wounds of our sins healed, and our relationship with God restored. We thank you for the opportunity you give us every day to go out into the world and be Catholic out loud. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Thank you for watching, boys and girls, brothers and sisters, and let's all try to make sure our next confession is a good one. Goodbye. So hello everyone and welcome to our instructional video on how to make a good confession. My name is Father Sam West and I am the pastor here at St. Joseph's and I am joined by Michael and Ember and they will help us uh, to see how we uh, participate in the sacrament of confession. So the first thing we want to talk about is we want to talk about what confession is and why it's so important. Well. Confession is one of the seven sacraments that Jesus gave to the church. And in this sacrament, our sins are forgiven. That what Jesus did on the cross, that he takes that event and wipes away our sins completely. 
right? And so that's a great gift. That's one of the greatest gifts that he has given us so that we can be free from sin and free from guilt in order to really love as God loves, to love him and to love our neighbor. So what we're going to do is we're going to enter the church now. And as we go into our church here at St. Joseph's, we, of course, have Jesus right in the center in the tabernacle. He's always there in the Blessed Sacrament. And so what we're going to do, Ember and Michael, is to genuflect. You'll watch me as we go in uh, to then take our places to continue our instruction. confessionals here at St. Joseph's Catholic Church, and there's three things before we begin our practice confession that I want to show you. First, I want to show you there are two doors, and this one, Michael, what does that say on that door? Anonymous, which... Anonymous, yeah. which means... Um, not showing yourself. Exactly. That when we enter in through this door to do our confession, we are behind a screen uh, or there is uh, something that's up, there's like a sheet up, so that you can't be seen by the priest. Mm -hmm. And that is an option, so you can go anonymous. Now, how about Ember, what does this one say here? Face to face. It says face to face. And what does that mean? It means that you can see the priest when you're confessing. Exactly. Just like it sounds, right? Face to face. So we have either face-to-face, -face, you can go to confession, or you can go anonymous. Now, we also have above me, what does that look like there, Michael? The lights there. It shows what's vacant, basically. Like, red light means someone's in there right now, green light means uh, means there's not, they're not in there. Right. right. So green means go, red means stop. Right? Yes. Yeah. So right now, we have a green light, so that means that there is nobody in either one of these confessions, but it means that there is a priest in there. Okay, if the lights are off, if both lights are off, there is no priest, so there's no point in going in. But now, let us um, go through a confession uh, real quick. We'll just do kind of a mock confession. Okay, so now, Amber, you are in the confessional. We are face-to-face, -face, so you can see the priest. So now um, we want to begin the confession by the sign of the cross, right? We begin all of our sacraments in the sign of the cross in the Holy Name of the Holy Trinity. So we say, the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And you would say, bless me, Father, for I have sinned. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. And then you would say, how long it's been since your last confession. So whenever it was a, bless me, Father, for I've sinned, it's been, and then the number of months or how much time since your last confession. Then you would, right away, which you're not going to do now in this mock confession, but you would then go into your sins. And it's not uncommon for sometimes a person to bring a little sheet they've written out for their examination of conscience. That is fine. You can write down what sins you want to say. It may sometimes be easier. You won't forget a sin. Um, That's what I was thinking. Right. Depending on the sin, I would give some instruction, the priest would give instruction to help you not sin again. So, now we will continue with your brother on the rest of the confession. After receiving your instruction, you would then receive your penance. But that's a very important part of the confession. So, you, typically the penance would be the number of maybe prayers that you would say, three Hail Marys, two Our Fathers, or it could be a penance that you would do. Maybe you have to um, say you're sorry to somebody, um, or maybe the priest will say do a good act for your parents. So after the penance, then we're going to do our act of contrition. So Michael, do you remember? Do you have an act of contrition that you want to use? Oh my God, I am heartily sorry for having offended thee, and I detest all my sins because of thy just punishment but most of all because they offend thee, my God, who are all good and deserving of all my love. And I firmly resolve with the help of thy grace to confess my sins, to do penance, and to amend my life. Amen. Amen. All right, so now at this point uh, in the confession, uh, we're ready for the absolution. And that is the moment that the sins are 
absolved or wiped away in the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ is applied to the person who's confessing in that place in that time. And so the way the absolution prayer works is God the Father of mercies to the death and resurrection of his Son has reconciled the world to himself and sent the Holy Spirit among us for the forgiveness of sins. To the ministry of the church, may God give you pardon and peace and I absolve you from your sins in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. You did a wonderful job. Thank you to both of you. And thank you everyone for paying attention. And we are looking forward to your first confession in which you will be able to experience God's healing, mercy, and love. And all of your sins will be forgiven and have the peace that he wants for you reconciled with God and with one another. So God bless you. And through the intercession of the Virgin Mary and our patron St. Joseph, that you will always uh, know God's forgiveness and love. Thank you.